What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So we've been getting a lot of reports over the past few days regarding new proposals, uh, what Democrats are planning to do with this $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill, what Senator Bernie Sanders is fighting for, what Senator Joe Manchin is pushing for, what even Representative Josh Gottheimer is saying. But here's what's happening over the past 24 hours or so. We are starting to see more reports and leaks of what Democrats want. Well, here's what actually came out today. According to a couple reports this afternoon, Democrats are okay with waiting on passing that $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill. One White House aide says that inflation is causing more Democrats to consider additional relief for the American people. Here's what, here's what this person is saying. That unemployment benefits will not be coming back, and I think that's something that we, we pretty much knew, but due to the limited amount of assistance programs that are still available, another stimulus check could make its way back and be uh, supported by the majority of Democrats. They're also saying that with recent issues and the recent poll numbers, Another check is what the American people need to boost their confidence in Democrats. That's what they're saying. Now, it, it, it makes sense why this statement, uh, this person didn't uh, provide their name with this statement. Obviously, they didn't want to be named. But here's the crazy part. Over the past week, we've been getting more and more leaks and uh, you know, anonymous statements from White House aides Okay, con congressional aides as well. We've been getting more statements. And so this has me a little bit, I'm a little disturbed by this because of how organized Democrats are actually uh, you know, trying to push this thing through. They're very unorganized. And we're starting to see this. We also saw this with Republicans last year. And is this just a thing that goes on with, with lawmakers? Or is this a Republican or Democratic thing? I don't know. But what I can tell you is right now, the hardest part with this, with this year and the, the, the dysfunction we're seeing today, is that Democrats hold all the power. They have the House, the Senate, and the presidency, and yet they can't come to an agreement on what they should pass? That's the frustrating part for me. But we know that some Democrats are fighting for more for the American people. They want to see more. But the proposals that are coming out Democrats are saying we need more assistance today. Let's get the American people the assistance they need today. But the proposals that keep coming out are not reflecting that urgency. They're all talking about let's provide for the American people in the future. Let's provide some additional stimulus money for people in the future and let's do that through an automatic trigger. I addressed that this morning. That's what, something that President Biden supports. I also addressed that Congress is actually looking into putting money aside, tens of billions of dollars for the future pandemic, but yet this pandemic that we're still in, no, they don't plan on putting any more money into it. So we're gonna see what happens there. We do know that some of the, the proposals that are coming out right now are going to help out the American people. Here's something that we know. The, the, the Ways and Means Committee right now is actually going to move forward with an additional uh, proposal to boost retirement savings for many low and middle income earners. One of the proposals is gonna require all employers who don't currently offer a retirement plan, okay? This is all employers. They will be, they will be required to then automatically enroll their employees into an IRA or some form of a 401k. That's the first proposal. Second proposal is gonna make the saver's credit refundable. Here's what this means. Currently, married, if you're an individual, you can, you can get a saver's credit of up to $1,000. If you're married and you, I think you make under like $32,000, if you make less than that, you can, you can get a saver's credit up to $2,000. Okay, but the, the problem right now is it's currently not refundable. So, here's what this means. And again, I'm no tax expert. I could be a little bit wrong here, but I'm pretty sure this is exactly what it means, okay? If you go and, uh, you go and do your, your, your uh, tax refund at the end of the year, okay? You go and file your taxes, 
and you do not get a reef or you do not owe any money okay let's say you uh, get like you know $200 back or $500 back perfect you get $500 back but you also saved that $2,000 well, you would actually not be able to get any of that money because it's not refundable. But if you actually got, let's say you owed $2,000 and you got this $2,000 uh, savers credit, then it would actually cancel each other out and you'd owe $0. So that's what they're trying to do is make this savers credit refundable. So that's the good news there. Now, as I mentioned earlier, many lawmakers keep on questioning why we keep pushing for future plans why we keep on pushing everything into the future and let's provide for ourselves in the future when tomorrow isn't guaranteed they say that we need to do more now to get through this pandemic and some worry that people aren't saving enough money because it's not because they don't want to and because this this savers credit isn't refundable that's not why they're not saving money they're not saving money because their expenses exceed their income you cannot save money if your expenses exceed your income. It's not possible. And just from an investor's uh, standpoint, from an uh, investment point of view, I can tell you right now that saving the majority of your money, currently when we are seeing a rise of inflation, you are going to lose. It doesn't make sense. Your dollar is worth less tomorrow than it is today, simply due to inflation. So this is one of the reasons why I always recommend invest in real estate, invest in stocks or invest in a business invest in i'm all for investing in a business i'm all for investing in stocks all for investing into real estate but pick and choose pick and choose which ones you want there, there's a lot of options out there i know the stock market isn't always looking great i know real estate's fairly expensive but at the same time you can start a business for free it doesn't cost you anything but your time and you can start making some money on the side so i recommend you do that also, here's some of the big news that came out today. Democrats actually spent some of the day trying to pitch their roadmap to citizenship uh, through immigration to the Senate parliamentarian. Democrats are saying that th this will impact the federal budget, so they're not worried about it. However, some experts say, and Republicans are telling us, this isn't gonna pass the Senate's bird rule because it doesn't impact the federal budget. However, uh, according to a few reports, Elizabeth McDonough, who's the Senate parliamentarian, she is the one that's going to decide on this. Well, she is a former immigration lawyer, so Democrats are actually somewhat excited about this because they say they feel she will be on their side this time around. Remember, she was not on their side when they tried to pass that $15 minimum wage for the entire country. As for the labor market and what the the expiration of unemployment benefits actually means though let's talk about that because this is looking very interesting experts are currently saying that this next week will be a critical a critical week for knowing how many people are actually going back to work they say that in the next two weeks we're going to have a good idea of about how many people that go on unemployment benefits uh, for the first time about how many people are going to start going on those because here's what you need to know the, the unemployment benefits expired this past Saturday. Okay, great. Well, they expired this past Saturday, but we are week behind in numbers. So when we get our, our uh, weekly unemployment claims numbers this coming, or next Thursday, we already got the other ones yesterday, but this coming Thursday, that's going to reflect this week. Okay, so things could kind of change there, but not really. But next month, Okay, the first Friday of every single month, and what is the first Friday of uh, the first Friday? It's going to be the first, um, the first of October. We are going to have the uh, jobs report comes out comes out on the first of October, which is going to be good because experts say this is when we will see the true numbers of uh, how many people are being uh, are going to get new jobs and how how well these jobs are coming back. So that's going to be good news there. The problem though, according to many experts, they say is that if we see these numbers and they don't show the economy is rebounding and unemployment benefits actually kept people from going hungry and losing their homes, this could be devastating, not only for the economy, but for the stock market and the American people. This could be morally uh, defeating for many people. But again, we won't know this for another month. So what we're hearing right now is, in the meantime, let's just wait and see what Congress decides to give us. I don't know what they're gonna to decide to give us, 
What I can tell you is I'm not very optimistic right now just with the recent news that we're, or the recent reports that we're seeing. So we'll see what happens there. Let's get into some school news for today though. More and more school districts are having to shut down schools and classrooms due to a shortage of not teachers, not staff in the school, but school bus drivers. In some districts, they are actually having to ask their teachers and their staff to also drive a bus to pick up their students. And in some counties, they're giving parents stimulus checks. The last one I read, it was a $250 stimulus check just to thank them for bringing their children to school and not having to rely on a bus. And just yesterday, a Portland, Oregon school district had to apologize to hundreds of parents because nine bus routes didn't actually run to pick up their kids for school and hundreds of children were standing on the sides of the streets waiting for hours for their bus that was never gonna come. So it's not great news there. Let's get into the COVID and employment news though. Many Americans are very upset that President Biden now has mandated that all healthcare workers across the country must get the vaccine. Many are so upset that they're actually considering quitting their jobs because of this. I know many people in the healthcare field, a lot of them are very upset and are considering what options do they have? Can they take legal options? According to President Biden, and today when, when governors were considering suing him, he said, and I quote, have at it. But we will see what happens. But now, many Republican lawmakers worry that this move by President Biden is gonna cause a massive change in jobs and in healthcare, simply because these people are quitting. So much so, that this could actually cause the economy to, com to completely roll backwards. Economists are saying that having thousands of healthcare workers simply leave the field, quit their jobs, this will not be easy to replace. This isn't like another field. This isn't like somebody at, let's, let's say a, a clerk at a grocery store or a stalker of shelves where it's it's not really a, I wouldn't say it's, it's just a very entry level job, but it's something that doesn't take uh, a lot of schooling and a lot of training. So they say in the healthcare field, you must be trained. And in many cases have years of schooling and training just to be accepted. So these are not positions that can be, feel, can be filled at will, but it seems like, according to experts, they say the Biden administration makes it seem like healthcare professionals, it's just any other field, anybody can go in, apply for a job, and boom, you get it. That's not the case. And in Florida, a state appeals court uh, ruled in favor of the ban on mask mandates. They say that this restores the rights for parents to choose whether their child will be required to wear a mask or not. Studies have shown that some people are negatively impacted uh, because of wearing a mask and it is harmful for them as a youth. Also, a recent study proves that unvaccinated individuals are actually 11 times more likely to die due to COVID. And this is actually a recent report from the CDC. So that's what we know right now. There's a lot of stuff going on. I will fill you in on all the new updates over this weekend. Tomorrow is September 11th. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to, I'm going to do a video tomorrow, obviously, but I'm also going to include the story of where I was, my feelings behind, uh, the September 11th attacks in, uh, in 20 years ago in, in 2001. Uh, so if you are interested in that story, I will put that at the end of my video tomorrow morning. So again, thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.